Hey, this is the LaRose Bros. And today we're back here in, at Edmonds Beach in the Puget Sound and we're going to be crabbing again. Uh, this time we have three crab pots and we're going to be using the body glove porter inflatable kayak to take them out there. And so today we have a new kind of bait, they're Spanish mackerel and um, we cut them up so that the crab can smell them and put them inside the three crab pots we have today. And it looks like there's like hardly anybody out here for crabbing, so we should have a pretty good chance of getting lots of crabs today. Yeah, and after we uh, put the crab pots out there, we're going to be doing some fishing as well. Uh, we're targeting flounder, we also might catch some greenling, so that'll be fun. Yep. So, yes. And we also have some new walkie-talkies. And if you like them, we might uh, be able to do a review on them. So put that uh, in the comments below if you would like us to do a review on the walkie talkies. All right, I'm heading out to the Puget Sound and I have my crab pot on the end of my kayak. As we said in our intro, we're using Spanish mackerel and never used that before. So it'll be interesting to see what it's like. Uh, Timothy's telling me to make sure to keep a little bit more left. Yep, I will. Okay. You may have to go quite a bit farther than that. The water's a lot choppier today, so that might be a problem when trying to drop it. But am I far out enough? You can drop it right there, Dad says. All right, sounds good. All right, I guess it's time to drop it. There's the crab pot, I'm going to drop it. Here, we, here it is. And there it goes, just like that. I uh, dropped the first crab pot and I'm heading back. But yeah, these new walkie-talkies are waterproof, so that's a cool feature about them. Again, if you wanted to do an in-depth review, then put a comment in the description. Uh, put a comment that uh, tells us if you want to, uh, if you think we should do one or not. Okay, I'm heading out with the second crab pot, so I'll just drop the first, and I'm heading out with the second one, and I'm gonna get to a good spot and then drop it. So I need to get over to where Sauces was, and then a little to the right. I'm almost there, just got a little bit more to go. How am I looking? Looking good, probably about 20 more yards. I think this is good. Looks good, how deep do you think it is? Uh, about as deep as the last one. Go ahead. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. There we go. Just need to let it take some line. There we go. Today, um, I'm hoping that we'll get some Dungeness crab because personally, I like Dungeness crab best. And, and, um, the nearest crab is rarer than rock crab, but some people like rock crab more. Hopefully with those three crab pots out there, that herring that we got will be able to attract plenty of crabs. So that's what we're hoping. So I'm going out, oh there's a jellyfish, a uh, really big one actually. I'm going out with the third crab pot and I am going to drop this third crab pot. I think that um, this time I should maybe go out slightly farther unless I can't see any tangled rope down below the buoy because if there's rope in an um should I go farther out than I did? Go right, a little bit more right, and then farther. I'm about to pass the buoy. Yep, a little bit more past the buoy. And yeah. then yeah, so, where you are at, uh -huh. straight ahead. Good. Okay dropping. I'm gonna drop this last one here. Last crab pot. Going in. 
There we go. Sometimes when you're crabbing, you just get really cold and we get some hot cocoa from Top Pot, one of the best donut places in this area. <sighs> Can't beat Top Pot Donuts. A great way to boost your crabbing day. This video is not sponsored by the way. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be starting to fish. So here's my pole. I have a two ounce weight with a sandworm on it. Just going to be dropping down below me. Hopefully there's some flounder down there or greenling. Well, if there's seaweed on your hook, then that's a good sign that you're in a seaweedy area. So I'm going to move that right here. Got one. Here you go, it's a nice little one. That's a good flounder. Well, that's pretty cool that I caught this fish. Uh, it's a flounder. Yeah, it's uh, some kind of sole, I, I guess. It's probably a rock sole. Yeah, that's a pretty cool flounder. So now I am out here, back out in the water, and I just finished paddling out here and I'm fishing. Fishing for flounder. I'm gonna see if I can catch any. Oh, I think I have a bite here. Maybe a small flounder trying to get my bait. Yep, definitely a fish here. Oh yeah, I got a fish here. I'm gonna just wait until it eats the whole thing. Then I'll set the hook so I can get it. Yep, there's definitely a fish here, no doubt about it. Maybe not. Nope, not swallowed. I'm gonna drop back down, keep fishing. What I like about flounder fishing is that you pretty much immediately get bites. It's very fun, even if you only catch small ones. There's, yeah, okay. Well, I got one, very small flounder. You see that flounder right there? I need to give it a little bit of water so that it can breathe. Okay, here it is. Very small, very, very small flounder as you can see. I will put down the pole, then hopefully I'll be able to get it out fast enough so it can survive. That was an easy, easy get the hook out. There you go. Hopefully, yep, it survives. That was actually pretty easy. Oh, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, super feisty. I don't know why, but these flounders make themselves seem like they're so big. Ugh. This one might just be really, whoa. Okay. All right, so this one looks a little bit bigger. Hopefully I'll be able to get the hook out and put it in here so that my pole stays with me without me having to hold. I brought a fish dehooker. We can, might be able to use this one as bait for something, but pretty cool fish. Okay, so like you saw, I caught a flounder, but I'm not done yet. I still have to get a crab pot so that I can come back in, but I will be able to pull it up. Maybe there might not even be any crabs in there. Uh, uh, there's crabs in here. Two crabs. 
two of them. Right there. There's one, and the other is over there. About to pick me. Oh, don't, don't. No! They both fell. Oh my gosh. Well, neither of them were keepers. In front of Oh my gosh, it has been a day. All right, so Tim just brought that that brought back that crab pot, and now I'm going to pick up the other ones. There you go, got it. This buoy drifted really far away from the crab pot. Oh, it has a crab. It has a rock crab. If we catch any other crabs, we might keep him, but he only has one claw. Here's the other crab pot right here. Um, I can literally see it in the water, so it's pretty shallow. Uh, it's right here, and there's a crab in it. A rock crab. So there's the rock crab. Uh, it seems like rock crab like fish more, since yeah. whenever we use sardines, then we usually get more rock crab. And this time we use a mackerel, so we got more rock crab. So if you want Dungeness, then you probably should use chicken if you want rock chicken crab. And turkey for Dungeness, and then yeah. herring or uh, sardines for or carp. mackerel. Uh, really, any kind of fish you'll yeah. get rock crab. Something so we're gonna just release this guy because he's about the same size as the last one and we don't have enough uh, crab to keep. Well, we had a really great time today in the Puget Sound going crabbing. We caught plenty of crab and flounder as well. Yeah, so we had a great time. Uh, this crab, as you can see, only has one claw, so that's kind of uh, funny. And it was just a really good time uh, if you like crabbing you should uh, totally come out here uh, if you like flounder fishing uh, there's uh, some uh, opportunities for you too so thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe we'll see you next time